Hey everybody, welcome to my channel. Winter is probably my second favorite time of the year to grow vegetable. Uh, summer is the first, of course, because you can grow almost anything and uh, my favorite thing to grow in the summer is peppers. But um, today I'm going to take you on a short tour around the garden and show you my winter planting and also why I love growing um, this time of the year. So I'm going to add some advantages and disadvantages along the way. So I guess we can start with uh, the disadvantage. Um, the first is that not all plants can grow in the winter. So you're going to have to select certain varieties that would do well in the cold months. And also it depends on where you are. Some places, uh, you know, you get freezes and stuff like that. So there's really no planting in the winter at all. But if you're further south, like in Texas, uh, zone 8A and 8B and so on, uh, winter is actually not too bad and you can grow a ton of plants. Another disadvantage is that uh, because of the cool months, uh, they do grow slower. And also because uh, this time of the year, the sun's location changed. So in some parts of your garden uh, where it gets a lot of sun in the summer, may not get any or very little in the winter so that also affect how the plants uh, grow and uh, so yeah those are just two of the uh, the disadvantages uh, but for the advantages uh, the first one is that um, because it's so cold uh, you're not gonna get a lot of pests so like insects that would eat your plants in the summertime you're not gonna get them in the in the in the winter time. You see, so all of my plants, I have not seen pests at all uh, this time of the year. So they grow nice and healthy and beautiful and green. So uh, if you choose the right varieties of plants, uh, you can actually have really good vegetable to use. So I'm gonna go around and show you some of the plants that uh, I grow and maybe you can pick them up and grow them for yourself. So here we have arugula. Uh, of course arugula is one of the most amazing plants uh, in my opinion because they taste great. They grow well in uh, basically most uh, time of the years. You can grow them in spring. In summertime they bolt really fast so uh, maybe not too much in the summer but in the fall and winter they're great. So I grow a whole raised bed of arugula and also all over the yard so I'll show you. And then next we have romaine. So romaine do love the sun and you see this part here and uh, it doesn't get too much sun so they do grow a lot slower. And uh, romaine is one of those uh, plants that can go, you know, withstand temperature down to like freezing. So we do, we did get a few uh, freezing days and we also got snow and uh, the snow melted quickly and then the plants are fine. So you see my romaine are doing amazing. And then perpetual spinach here. These are perpetual spinach. These are just such lovely plants. They taste great in soups and uh, they just grow beautifully and you know produce leaves all the time as soon as you cut them uh, wait a while they'll come right back so i guess uh, you know perpetually you get <laughs> spinach all the time um, they're not actually spinach but i think they're more in the shard swiss shard family so um yeah so those are just beautiful plants and here are my other romaine. Say I just drop seeds and then they just grow. And once they uh, grow to a certain size, I can pull them out and put them into places where I want them to go. And that's why you see these here. So I kind of like line them up. So uh, you can put them like a foot apart and that's perfect. And also there is my other perpetual spinach and that bush over there. Uh, I've har harvested so many leaves already throughout the summer. Uh, actually it's been growing for a year now. So uh, the plants can just, uh, they're perennial, so they, they'll just uh, grow throughout the year in parts that the, you know, the soil doesn't freeze over. And here are some more arugula. So you see I put them all over the, the yard and this is the, where my pear tree is. and. There's, there's just available space, so I just sprinkle seeds and they just grow. And I get fresh arugula all the time, so I've been eating arugula like the entire year. And here we have some 
Sorrel. Uh, Sorrel is also another variety of perennial. And uh, in places where the soil doesn't freeze over, they, they'll grow you know, year round, produce beautiful leaves. They're like the lemony, they taste great. And also spinach, you see, I, I grow spinach all over the yard. They also would do well in the cool months. And this is Celtus. Celtus is another great lettuce variety. They do love a lot of sun, so this time of the year they grow very slow. But you can eat the leaves. But Celtus is, is a, a lettuce variety that uh, people grow for the stems. So they grow big trunk, like the stems. And then that's, that part is used uh, in stir fries and soups and stuff like that. So th that's the best part. But they do require uh, a lot of sun to grow well. So uh, this time of the year they still grow, but very slowly. And then I have chrysanthemum right here, vegetable chrysanthemum. The same thing with, uh, you know, the celtis. They will grow well in the winter time, but they do require a little bit more sun and a little bit more uh, warmth, a little, you know, like in the 65 to 75 degrees. They grow enormous and they're just delicious. They, they have this really unique um, aroma, almost like herb-like. But um, it's a vegetable, I guess, because they call it vegetable chrysanthemum. And uh, they're just great in hot pots and just amazing plants there. I think they're really healthy for you too. So uh, you can look those up. Okay, and another lettuce variety that I grow is called the um, uh, salad bowl lettuce. And these are just lovely lettuce. They're beautiful. They, they grow really full and the, the leaves look like this, like almost like flower. And um, they don't mind the cool months and they grow really fast. So uh, that's one of the other lettuce varieties that I recommend you growing. You can actually also grow this in hydroponic in the winter time outside. And I'm going to show you that soon. But uh, yeah, uh, delicious lettuce, grow really quick, beautiful, produce a ton of leaves. Uh, pick the leaves and come again and just, you know, they'll produce leaves for a while. Um, also, another advantage of uh, growing vegetable in, t in the winter time is they don't bolt very fast. So they're going to produce leaves for a long time. Uh, so that's, uh, that's a really nice advantage. So you have leaves for months and months. Okay, and here I have some more vegetable chrysanthemum. Rosemary are good if you love herb. They, they'll grow throughout the year. They're perennial again in places where the, the ground doesn't freeze. And here I have some more, you see, salad bowl lettuce, beautiful lettuce. And uh, I grow them in this grow bag here with my Korean lettuce, I mean Korean radish. I love Korean radish. They produce enormous bulbs and uh, you can also eat the leaves while you wait for the bulbs to grow. Uh, so they, they taste really nice. You can eat them raw in a salad or you can stir fry them. So. Uh, um, that's that's the neat thing about growing Korean radish and I grow a ton of them and I just picked so many to make kimchi recently so uh, there's not too many left but uh, the coming spring I'm gonna grow a bunch more and you see here I have more arugula you see that and also vegetable chrysanthemum they're all over the place I love those as well um, a, and as I mentioned, they do grow a little bit slower uh, in the cool months, but you can just pick the, the tops and they'll, they'll spread out and then they'll grow right back. So those are the plants that you can just pick and come again. And you see, they're all over the place. I love them. And then beets. I love growing beets in a winter time. This beet here is finally three years old. It's just such a beautiful plant. and. Um, because it looks so gorgeous and you know and i do like the leaves i i just let it grow for years so look at the size of the bulb guys it's huge down there i, I don't know how big it is because uh, i haven't looked but uh, i'm sure it's probably like a size of a grapefruit because the trunk is enormous but it produces these beautiful dark purple leaves here that i like to eat so uh you know they keep producing leaves and when I pick them they would just produce more and this plant grows really strange it's almost like a, a tree structure you see it has branches branches and branches and branches and each of the branch uh, there are a bunch of leaves coming out everywhere 
So it's almost like a, we can probably call this like a, a beet tree. <laughs> and here I also have more beets. Beautiful purple, a little greenish sometimes. And uh, there's bulbs down there. But I, I'm really not interested in the bulbs. I loved eating the leaves, so I just let them grow. So I, I plant them really close together. So if you're wondering why I, I plant them so close, that's because I'm not interested in the bulbs. And again, I have more here, you see? Beets. These are grown as microgreens, um, but you know, they over uh, the past few months, they start taking off and growing much more. So I can take the leaves and you know, you can take a few leaves, put in your salad, and it'll make everything look so bright and beautiful. And here I have some more Celtis lettuce. So these have gotten a little bit bigger. So in the, in the spring, they're going to produce these huge stems and you'll see, uh, I may do another update soon, but you can eat the leaves as well. So uh, here, some more Korean radish, you see? There it is right there. Uh, but they get big, they get uh, a few pounds. So uh, these are just the small ones, so I, I'm gonna have to wait. And then more spinach. So spinach are great. I love just picking leaves and then uh, eat them in a salad and they, they just grow right back. And cilantro, this time of the year, they just, <laughs> they do amazing. So uh, I've been harvesting a ton of cilantro to make salsa and all that stuff. And uh, see, they, they grow right back. I, I just love these plants where you just pick them and uh, wait a little bit, they grow right back. More perpetual spinach, salad bowl lettuce. You see, I grow them all over the yard because they, they're great. So I haven't uh, purchased lettuce in a while because I grow so many of them. And then some, some more romaine. You see these romaine? I just pick the leaves, I don't pick the whole head, and they just keep growing right back. Uh, some more arugula. Love arugula. <laughs> I just grow them all over the place. And here's my herb bed. The rosemary is out of control. And this plant actually started from a little branch I, I propagated a few years ago. And so now, um, it's gotten really big and I, I need to trim it so that I can have space for other herbs. And here some sage, sage are great as well, they're perennial in my state. So every year, this, these two actually have been here for more than three years. So every spring I'll cut them back, you see how, how bad they look? But in the spring they'll look beautiful again. So uh, all they do is they need a trim to clean up all of these old leaves. And then a little feeding and they'll back be back to uh, the beautiful stage all over again. Okay, and here I have some more romaine. Uh, here's some Korean radish right there. And I also have the, the purple daikon right there. These are purple daikons. So let me show you. See, that's the purple daikon right here. Those are also really good. They're, ni they're nice and, and, and spicy when you eat the, the roots. And uh, there it is right there. Spicy right, daikon. They're starting to, uh, to bud right now. So you can save those for seed or you can just cut them off. And some more romaine, you see? Lots and lots of romaine because we eat a ton of, of uh, lettuce. And uh, you know, just come out, pick leaves and pick leaves and you have like lettuce for the entire family. Like practically every two to three days you can come out and pick because I grow so many so I never run out of romaine. And these are Celtis right here, you see? Very nice and beautiful. You, and then we have some red lettuce. Been harvesting it for a while, you see? Just cut the leaves. And now it's starting to bolt right there. So they, they will produce uh, seeds very soon. And when that happens, the, 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 the leaves are gonna be tougher and also it's gonna be a little bit bitter. And then I grow some uh, purple Mizuna. These are uh, 
they're, they're, they taste very much like mustard has a spicy mustard taste um, it's a little bit strong so uh, you know if you don't like the strong mustard taste and uh, those are really not a variety you would like to grow uh, but they're just beautiful you see this purple color I grow them for uh, kind of they brighten up the garden see that when you mix them in with this lighter green dark green and then throw in a little purple it just changes everything and here is one of my favorite plant this year I love growing Mizuna um, Mizuna are one of those uh, uh, they, they taste like a, a cross between arugula and mustard so maybe that's why I love them so much because I love arugula and this plant has been here for the entire year uh, it survived the frost and snow and everything and uh, the neat thing about this is they just grow enormous all you need is one plant because uh, again I don't pick the whole plant I just pick leaves to use and they produce plenty of leaves for just uh, one single family and uh, you know they're starting to bolt now flowers are beautiful they also attract the bees so um, they, they're just great overall and I just love eating them they also look beautiful see the, the entire plant is just amazing so if you have not grown Mizuna uh, they're great uh, certain places like restaurants they they will sell Mizuna salads you can eat this in a salad uh, I love eating this raw but um in Japan people would eat the leaves here the top and then the stems you see the stems right here they pickle these so they're great in pick pickles um, so you can look up those recipe and try it so it's a very nice plant uh, one to two plant is all you need for one single family and then I have some more Mizuna the purple kind uh, you may be wondering what these are these are crests uh, I usually grow them as a microgreens but uh, this time of the year I just grow them as a sort of like a cover crop for my for my raised bed and uh, that they, they do really well they they kind of like help uh, fix my soil and uh, I usually once they grow so much I pull them out and just throw them on top of the soil and the worms eat them uh, as they decompose so that they're, they're just great and you can grow them in bunches and of course because it's winter time that's why these are great I, I just throw them all over my raised bed and just pull them out later and here I have another raised bed full of perpetual spinach and some Korean radish that is getting enormous and these here I didn't uh, harvest them because I wanted the seed pods here so I just let them grow and they, 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 they grow really funny so do you see this bulb here huge bulb and then on top there's another bulb look at that from the the big bulb so I guess if you leave them so long they started to grow multiple bulbs like that one there you see and you see guys uh, I've been showing you all of the plants and there's no pests on here um, so that that's the neat thing about winter gardening it's just you're not gonna get like caterpillars and aphids and stuff like that I think this time they're not active this time of the year so uh, no white flies or anything like that because I guess it's always wet and uh, cold so those bugs just don't come along and here I have another perpetual spinach you see how beautiful they grow this one I haven't touched yet so I can harvest more leaves and these smaller leaves will grow more so I will I would do something with that very soon and this I'm not sure what this is uh, I think I, I had some scraps left over and I threw pieces out here and I think it, it could be a broccoli or a uh, cauliflower I'm not sure <laughs> it's just a, a, a one other piece that I threw in here and it, it started growing okay in the fruit trees area I have some vegetable chrysanthemum and salad bowl lettuce seeds there and that's uh, usually how I start my seeds I just throw them in, in a designated area and just wait until they grow and if I need to take them out I just pull them up and put them into uh, you know the raised beds or pots or whatever 
So that's sort of like a, a, an easy way to start your seeds, just throw it somewhere. And then here I have beets that I took out from the, the microgreens area that I showed you. So I think these, I'm gonna let it grow to the bulb. Uh, of course, they're just too many. I, I need to move them soon. And then those are purple Mizuna. Here's some lettuce that I grow in pots. These are just five inch, five and a half inch pots. And just a few of these, you can actually grow a ton of lettuce for your family. You see, they, they can grow very, very big. So harvest uh, leaves when you need them, not the whole thing, and they'll just grow right back. And some more over there. See, I grew some beets over there. Okay, here are some of my fun hydroponic products that I've been doing outside just for fun. And look at this beautiful Mizuna. You can grow in a one gallon. Outside in, in the cold and everything, they, they, they don't seem to mind. So this is probably the biggest Mizuna that I have, the purple one. It's just such a beautiful plant. Deep, deep purple and underneath is kind of green. So imagine that in a salad. It's gonna make your salad look amazing. And then fun projects for, this is a Starbucks container. That is my arugula. And this is a, a milk container, more arugula. And then these are five gallon containers and I have more arugula and you see I harvested all the large leaves already and that's why they're small like this but they'll grow right back. Uh, some more lettuce, you see lettuce all over the yard because they're, they're the best plants to grow in the cool months and more lettuce and hydroponic. I need to clean out the system very soon and vegetable chrysanthemum in hydroponic. And you can see I harvested so many. They were, it was like super tall, like two to three feet tall. And I harvested them and these are grown outside and they can withstand very cold temperature. And more hydroponic stuff here. I've been eating a ton of lettuce off of this. You see, he just picked the leaves. So they started from here. So I eaten the leaves and you know, just keep eating leaves and uh, they just keep growing back so uh, uh, you can do um, outdoor hydroponic cracky method or use the solar pump right here for some aeration if you want and you can grow lettuce that you can harvest for a while and even in the in a winter time as long as there's a little sun to pump my uh, my pump right there you actually don't even need the pump but the, the only issue is that uh, the rain like this past week we have so much rain so that's why doing a, a pump which is a DWC method is great because the pump I mean the, the reservoir will fill up with rainwater and if you're doing the cracking method they would drown unless you pour the water out uh, with this here because air is being pumped into it uh, when the Sun comes out even when the container is filled with rainwater they would still be alive and be just fine. So um, you have to take that into, uh, you know, as a factor. Rain is a big thing when you grow in hydroponic outside. And lastly, I have more lettuce. These are salad bowl. I'm growing in a, in a floating raft. I started this inside and uh, now it's kind of warming up. So I, I moved it outside and it's been outside for a while. And of course the rain kind of filled it up and it still is it's just fine because it's connected to my solar and uh, there you can actually do a project like that and get lettuce for a long time okay so uh, that is it guys actually let me show you one more thing I just started seedlings for um, um, maybe the spring because spring is coming very close and uh, these are radish and normally they they don't sprout too well if it's too cold so uh, I took a, a clear trash bag put it on top and that helps it you know gives keep it warm and there it is look at that <laughs> they're growing so my radish are sprouting and those are all the Korean radish that I'm gonna grow in the garden 
and these are more radishes and I think I have some Chinese cabbage in there but yeah these are um, things you can do if you want to start seeds outside um, and try to keep them a little warm and of course only uh, cool weather plants can be do, uh, done this way so that you know they, they can withstand the cold weather and grow so uh, that's it guys thank you so much for watching please like comment and subscribe